Hola community, I'm Pablo Vasquez with another episode of Blender Today Live. We have a release, a Bemus release, a Bemus Blender 2.92. It's out, it's out there. People are using it, downloading it, freaking out with all the geometry nodes, uh, things to do, even though it's fairly limited because um, it's 2.92, it was a very first release, but maybe that's a good thing, you know? In the comments, I, I was reading the comments on, on YouTube on the on the uh, five uh, minutes of all the features in less than five minutes by uh, Remington, Southern Shirty, and he, um, and, and all the comments were like, oh no, now I feel like I know less of Blender because there is more things to learn. However, I don't think in, in one way, yeah, it is, it is true, like you, there is more to learn, but on the other hand, 2.92 I think has the right amount of uh, features regarding geometry nodes and everything nodes uh, that makes it so not intimidating. Like, you know, just some scattering, just some point distribution, some um, basic um, modeling, but at least you get this concept of having a modifier, a custom modifier that you can tweak and do whatever you want with it, basically. It's just building your own setup. However, what we're gonna see today, it's not much. <laughs> it's been a quiet week, so there are not a lot of changes, but uh, let's go a little bit through the um, through through what I have uh, made last week. What we, what we made at the, with, with the studio, with Blender, people. Let's go super quick through it. Create impossible, why create impossible? Well, because you couldn't do things that uh, you can now with, with uh, geometry nodes. This splash screen and the same, the artwork that I'm using for while well, you were waiting for this is uh, by Joanna Kowierska and the link is in the description. The um, five minutes video by Southern Shorty is awesome. You should check it out if you haven't already. It's on this channel, so you probably got the notification because I bet that you have the notification on, of course. Of course, isn't it? Isn't it? What is that heavenly light? I got <laughs> reading the comments. That heavenly light is summer. I don't, that, that's, I mean, I could just turn it off, like turn it down, just so you see, but you see, it's like, it's it's kind of summerish. I know I'm gonna be cold in a bit, so I have my uh, jacket prepared here, but uh, <laughs> without further ado, yeah, summer cold for, for uh, confirm. It's, it's kind of getting nice weather on this side of the planet. Unlike the other side of the planet where I'm from, which is getting actually uh, <laughs> more cold. And it's March, what the heck, what the heck. Geometry meets nodes, I think you all know this. It's, uh, it is, it is, it's a catchy phrase for geometry meets the nodes. But not only that, we're gonna have uh, volumes also, like uh, other types of geometry that meets the nodes in 2.93, point scattering. What I like about this year's approach is that um, uh, I, we try to, to put more emphasis in uh, files, in demo files that people can check. So if you uh, notice across all these, um, the new features that are here, there are files that you can go and test. Um, there are a few for uh, for sculpting even, there are more files, and um, chop chop. Did anybody get the reference chop? No, 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 nobody get the, got this reference because this is from a dialogue of the second uh, or the one and a half part of Cosmos Laundromat, the open movie project. and. Uh, it's a dialogue that it's uh, it's on the cloud, but you have to be really hardcore blender uh, trivia um, like connoisseur for that. Um, it's uh, it's when when the love of Frank the sheep, you know the sheep in Cosmos Laundromat. Well, in one of the other lives, as uh, as uh, he he knows someone, and then she leaves, and then he's just chop chop. So that is a reference that no one is gonna get. But you should you should do it. Also, again, yeah, download sculpt more uh, sculpt demo files. Uh, also for Grease Pencil, the there is files for all pretty much anything. And there was also more links to the manual, which we didn't we didn't <clears throat> we didn't use to to link to the manual so often. So I think um, I think it's a good thing. And also more artwork by Joanna. It's awesome. I wanted this to be the splash. I, I prefer, uh, I don't know, I, uh, the first time I saw it, I was like, um, you know, is having the eyes when you open um, the uh, blender, that would have been great. There is a few 
maybe things with the with the position of the wing maybe the composition could have been uh, fixed a little better but but yeah evolved somebody got this pun yes i think evolution eevee shouldn't acknowledge that it's a known character cryptomat and show your aob now they match cycles speak volumes this awesome simulation by crossmind studio um, render anything with the NVIDIA RTX with a hybrid mode, make a splash with flip and APIC. Even more physics, another render, I love this one. So maybe, maybe getting a bit too much of a close up, but hey, it's nice. And, the, and this video came out of nowhere, did you, everybody have you seen it? Um, this video really shows the potential of the, of the, Exposure node like look look at this area. It's all dark in the original um, Render and you can really push it. I don't know if this this demo was done in purpose just to demo how awesome the exposure node is But yeah, it's, it's like grabbing info from nowhere uh, A lot of people think Monday is a bad day, but as we have ah, thank you we have Blender today, we have Sammy Sam, are you Pablo? I am Pablo, but not, not the Pablo developer of Sculpt mode, if that's what you think. Animation, we could have had more animation here. Um, just a wink to the animation module. And always remember, will uh, is and will always remain free forever. Is the development fund any higher? Usually after the releases, there is a little bump. Oh, it is actually, it was 135 um, before, so... And there's no new corporate, so it's all people. So super awesome, thank you, community. All right, there is a chat on uh, a chat, a thread on Blender community where I'm gonna be answering questions towards the end of the show after I um, I get to to go through what's new in Blender. You know what's new in Blender? There's a bunch of uh, sections: cycles, geometry nodes, is user interface, Chris pencil, add-ons even, and popery, popery. <laughs> are Pablo's favorites in recruitment process? Yes, if you're Pablo, you have a uh, more chance to... No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> or maybe, maybe. There is a lot of Pablos in the community. Okay, switching. Entering the... What's matter? What matters to us? Cycles. Let's start with Cycles. The render engine that it's... It's getting a lot of attention lately. Cycles. Now in cycles for viewport denoising, so the so denoising when you when you do it in the viewport, uh, you know when you when you do the denoising, um, in, if you use it like straight away from with the denoise um, with the denoise node in compositor in the compositor, if you just use it straight away without just much information, just the color, it's it can eat away some of the detail from your render. So it's usually uh, better to hook it up with other uh, entries. Like you can also do like with the normal or albedo. In the viewport, there was no options. Basically, you could you, you would lose detail because it was just using the, the, the color by default. Now you can, now there is an option and um, it says viewport input passes, but in the, um, this was changed to just say input passes. So if we open Blender, switch to my evil twin, go to Cycles, and you'll see that sampling denoising now has the input passes option. So you can, uh, in the viewport, you can enable color albedo uh, or color albedo normal or color, just the color. Um, if you want the most detail to keep the most detail, just uh, use all three of them. So that way uh, it's gonna take the normals into account this a uh, time for spammers uh, arrive yay let's continue next actually we are changing topics already geometry <laughs> nodes in geometry nodes there is an addition and a change to how the um, attribute proximity node works there is um, there is this patch by uh, Victor, the, the developer that actually made the node. He made it so you can... Um, uh, this patch adds an output field to the attribute proximity node and renames the existing one from result to distance. So um, 
at the beginning we would uh, the, at the beginning or a few days ago <laughs> this node would give you just the result you know just the remaining distance between the um, the object and the the other what do you choose the faces the uh, points and now you have two options one is the distance and one is the location this has been changed it's not like this uh, anymore it's, it's called position but it, it's the same um so when you actually open blender and compile it today it's gonna have position in it thanks you hans for changing it last minute for the show so let's see some examples here so one example is shrink wrap let's see what what it what victor means with this let's see maybe i'm gonna open it in a new tab how's how's the chat going i see a lot of action happening here is it spamming no blender is free is, is free <laughs> really people are still asking if blender is free <laughs> seriously we put it in the <laughs> bam free to use for any purpose it's in the home page um let's let's uh, see so yeah i'm gonna open it in a new tab so here this is an example of like a kind of shrink wrapping option so you get two um options one you get the uh, location so the points so the the position the coordinates of the points the position of, the, of each one of the points and you also get the distance from the object that you are from your target so this gives you a lot more flexibility you can do shrink wrap with notes I'm gonna flip to the other side again so you can read a bit better super nice the other option is a shrink wrap point cloud what is it oh yeah that's pretty cool because you know um, shrink wrap you can only apply to certain objects to meshes um, the curves have no but now this gives you all the freedom you need shrink wrapping next uh, in the list user interface grease pencil and uh, some popery section actually today I think it's gonna be super fast um, <laughs> which is a good thing the next section uh, so thank you victor for working on it and thank you for the developers that uh, review this so hans thank you for reviewing the next section um just related to <laughs> geometry nodes it knows and in nodes in general but more in the user interface side of things fabian which by the way this developer fabian has been contributing uh, um, code lately and he's been he asked for um for permission to commit those changes directly without having to um well of course everything has to go through um through review from the developers but in um it's it's easier if the developer can just do it themselves so he now has commit access so congrats to fabian super nice to have you on board to the patch this patch tweaks how virtual sockets look so remember have you ever noticed how some <laughs> nodes have this um, virtual socket which is it, it's the internal name for the sockets that are not there yet but you can plug into it so they don't they are the where they could be um, they're like a placeholder for when the new inputs can be there and it used to be transparent and uh, just really hard to see so now it's uh, hard to see but it's gray and opaque <laughs> but now it should be easier to to see to spot I think it maybe could be a bit brighter the outline or or the inside but not too bright because um, gray is for floats and white is for collections so there's a limitation in there next in the list also regarding user interface this one is from Harley Harley removed the blend thumb pass part all what is it it's the you know on, on the when you when you have when you're viewing through the camera you have this um dark thingy around it like this i don't have my add-on enabled but in my <laughs> i made an add-on when i changed this um this with a shortcut but the passport out so in the viewport display you have the this option so 
this was actually being saved on the blend file. So if a, a blend file is square, which usually like the thumbnail is, is square, then and the and the render was 16 by 9 or like just just landscape, you have this waste of space uh, dark look around it which it's not really helpful in the end like okay gives you some info about the uh, size and the maybe like how the aspect ratio of your lens but you're losing a lot of info that it could be better um, displayed so in this case um, this one is gone and also it's breaking spring's legs for some reason and autumn's um, but yeah it's uh, i think it looks better now because you can actually see more what is going on in your preview of the blend files the other option the other option the other improvement oh this one it's great um have you ever <laughs> this is like a like a stand-up comedian uh, hey, have you ever noticed how have you ever noticed yeah how when you open files with library a lot of library linking and if you have errors one error maybe one file that changed the name but you were linking a lot of stuff from it you will get a literary wall of text like the entire blender screen with errors very useful blender it was just like oh, all the libraries failed basically um but it will give you about every data block inside of that library that would fail and it would it would just be overwhelming you wouldn't even read because it was just the whole planet and it was hard to read hard to follow didn't really make any sense so not anymore the improvement that bastian made it is that avoid wall of warnings and a picture is worth a thousand words so <laughs> yeah but you know a, a blend file is is worth even more so let's uh, let's see it in action here I have a file from uh, 2a yeah a, a file from Sintel I, I, I like uh, retro so <laughs> I have a file from Sintel here that is opening really well it's a it's a shot from the shaman let's see the view camera can't see anything well, this is, looks beautiful, but this is, let's see if it's linking anything. Um, in the Blender file, yeah, it is. has lots of libraries, so it's linking from characters, environment, and props. So if I... Isn't it annoying when you scale up the window and it, and it scrolls down? It's like, what are you doing, Blender? What, what is it? If any UI developer is looking at it and wants to have fun, can we just stick it to the bottom <laughs> if there is space? Um, the <clears throat> Charles folder seems to be um, linked, so I'm gonna rename that folder to something else just just to just to mess up with Blender and make it open so it gives a lot of errors. Let's uh, make the user interface slightly bigger so you guys can read. And uh, let's open this file again. I renamed the, the characters file, so it's going to give me a lot of errors. And in other occasions, this will give me a wall of text. But now, ta-da, tiny wall of text, three errors. Two, one for each file, which is good. I, I like this is important to know, like the entire file is missing. But hey, the, here it says library. Two libraries and 76 linked data blocks are missing. In the past, this will give you a wall of errors. Um, very, very handy. However, it is useful to see which uh, data blocks are missing. So the wall of text is still visible in, um, in the, here, in the, in the terminal or also in the info editor so if you go to the info you still get all these um all the libraries that were missing so it's not like you lose information it's just the first uh, <laughs> the first uh, wall of text is a bit tinier a bit smaller the wall of the wall of text that is all for the user interface yes that's all let's move into Grease pencil. Grease, grease in Spanish is gray, and uh, some people think that it's the it's a it's a grease like a gray pencil, not a grease pencil. 
so I have to pronounce more like Grease, not Grease. Grease Pencil. There is an improvement on the... Oh, I didn't save the link, but um, it's the... When using the field area, the, the field tool, feel, not feel. Why, why in English there are so many words that are the same? Bear, bear, beer. Bear hands, bear, bear, bear hands. The feel tool, it's, um, if it fails, sometimes like if, if you have a, if, if the gaps are not close enough or like if, if just fail for any reason, fill will always like fill the entire um, screen. So if it fail, it will just like paint everything. And um, based on feedback by uh, Daniel Martinez Laras and the community, the community, um, the they changed it. So now if the field cannot be performed, like it, it's failing, it's just not gonna paint everywhere. So it's it, it's better than having a, a wall of pink or any color in your face. Um, so yeah. Great improvement in there, and the other improvements is uh, is two commits that are improving the algorithm for interpolation. So this is harder to to see, <laughs> but it's um it's it's improving. For example, if the lines cross when using the flip algorithm for interpolation, but the angle is very sharp. Check the distance between the extremes. This plus the second part which improves the calculation of the distances and the change variable names to make it more readable. Okay, this is code. Um, but yeah, apparently this is um, improving the calculation of the distances. So based on this, plus the previous uh, change to the algorithm, there should be improvements. But please um, share the news if it works better or not. On Twitter, you can use hashtag B3D, hashtag B2D for Grease Pencil stuff, and hashtag uh, Grease Pencil. Let's see. Let's not see. Blocking some uh, some trolls in the chat. Next improvement in the puppery section. It's just a bit of everything. However, it's slightly related to Grease Pencil. Because remember, Grease Pencil in Blender 2.80, in 2.8, in the big jump, Grease Pencil got uh, split in two. One for um, Grease Pencil, what we know as it as of now, and annotations, just basic annotations. Many of the features were removed from the annotation system, just to make it more uh, for that, for annotations. Okay, basic color, um, but some features, some a bit too many features were removed, um, like the opacity. This one, um, it's back now. You're gonna find it in annotations, they can have opacity on. Continuing with the uh, popery section, have you ever used the purge operator? Perch. This operator is uh, is used to remove um, um, all the kind of data that is like orphan data that you don't need anymore that is dangling around on your file and you don't need it anymore. Now it's also going to remove indirectly unused data block. Um, those only used by unused ones recursively. So should look better. All the options are exposed in the file cleanup. Um, Let's see. How's the chat going? I like the asset manager. Hey, that's nice. How's the experience with the asset manager? I've seen some, um, I don't know if I, I saw it in one of the cha channels in Blender chat. The um, asset manager, the asset browser, it's getting on this. It's just a spoiler, but on the sidebar, you're going to be able to see thumbnails of the assets you're working like, like so you can drag them from the viewport also or you can apply them from the viewport instead of um, so you don't have to have always the asset manager open that is a super super good improvement that is not possible at the moment with the current asset browser you always have to have the, the browser open the editor open so yeah that will that, that's gonna come pretty pretty handy and Last in the puppery section, this is also a spoiler alert section about the improvements that are going to come for CryptoMat. CryptoMat is being reworked to be more flexible and work with other softwares also better. So um, the OpenXRs that are used and the naming scheme is going to be uh, customizable, but also you're going to be um, 
yeah, so it works better when you bring it with other, from other softwares or you take it to other softwares. Um, so you are able to change the naming scheme. Is the asset manager in 2.92? No, the asset manager is it will be hopefully in 2.93. It's scheduled for that, but um, it's yeah, it's it's gonna be in 2.93. But, <laughs> like everything, you know, that if, if it's not, um, if features are not there, they, I don't know, if uh, would you have, would you rather have, leave, leave a comment later, uh, would you rather have a half working feature or not have the feature for another release and then have a, uh, a better, a better experience? Um, I would, I would personally just wait for the feature to be more mature, whatever feature, I'm not talking about the asset manager here, the browser. Um, because if the experience in the first release is subpar with what you're gonna get next, people already got used to it, there is a ton of tutorials out there that are gonna be teaching the way of using the feature uh, for that one release instead of um, doing it properly later. I like the approach of the Geometry Notes project, which was like, okay, let's keep it um, compact, this um, 2.92 release. You can only do some scattering, some uh, um, basic uh, modeling, um, parametric modeling, but do less, but do it well. All right. Dev teammate, hi Pablo, testing and feedback. Why is it with everybody? The, the chat is going uh, very, it's very active today. How many people are watching this? 820. Um, so a lot of, I see a lot of action nowadays. What is it going on? Some spam to why, why spammers? Why, why us? We are the, we are the good guys. We came so far for free. Why would you come spam here? Go spam other places. Uh, let's uh, continue. Let's say change into the add-ons and just the last section, add-ons section. So, GLTF. GLTF's exporter now supports loose points and loose edges. Yes, I know you were waiting for it. <laughs> loose points, loose edges. Um, it's an option, right? It's an option because you don't always, you sometimes want to just not include them. Yes, exactly. It's a it's a toggle. Yeah. And what maybe here it could be it could say maybe in the description like what happens when you when it's off? Like are they discarded or they are um yeah. So what happens with them? And the last one is that inverse matrix is only when you're going to set if there is a parent. So if there's no parent, there is no need to do the to perform the inverse matrix in the GLTF exporter and that will close today's list of changes. I think I am, uh, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. We went through all of it. All right. Is the chat going fine? I'm gonna open the website here. There is 11 comments. I'm gonna refresh now. Maybe it was a bad idea. No, it's okay. 24 comments uh, and 38. I think I'm gonna manage. Let me open this and let me tell you in the meantime while I get some mate that um, that the new uh, website for Blender community it's coming along super nicely. We have the basic communities running and uh, this week we're gonna have right click select um, the, the system for right click select there and from day one we want to include an option for um, duplicates. So a way to somehow mark a, uh, a thread as the first one. And then, uh, for example, if somebody posts uh, something, uh, an, an idea that is a duplicate, uh, mark it as duplicate. So how do you think this should work? Do you have any ideas? So like, you do you mark every, like a moderator could go into a duplicate thread and then say this is duplicate and then give the URL maybe and automatically the other post is going to link to it or merging of posts. Do you merge the comments? That is a lot more tricky. I think uh, maybe not. Maybe not merging the, the comments. Maybe just a... Um, uh, should it take over the points? 
I uh, thanks Annie the X for mentioning it should give all of the points to the last one. So, well, but that's also a, a way to hack the system, right? Like if if you make a every week you make a duplicate for I don't know um, asset browse something that people are asking um, or performance, you know, the things that everybody is asking, and then uh, then it can be can be tricky. Like put them all the points together. Maybe the first, the original one should have the points, and then when listing the duplicates, each one is going to have the points. But I don't know if it should have it because yeah, people can uh, can abuse the system. So it's a link between duplicates. Yeah, link between the duplicates. For those that don't uh, know what I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about the community right-click select, which is used for submitting ideas. In, um, in to, to Blender, you know, things that the community or, or Blender itself can, um, yeah, the community or the developers can look and have get inspired. But yeah, lots of duplicates, so from day one we want to tackle that issue. Let's, uh, let's see, let's see what's, what's new. Answering the questions. The first one with four votes, votes by Augusto. It's, hi Pablo, why is there no plain primitive on the new add primitive tool? And yes, it would be a nice addition. Um, there is no plain primitive because I think it was never just uh, planned to, to be added. Like the, um, I don't remember the task itself, if he had like a plan for all the primitives, because there are also other primitives that could be added, right? They are not there. But a plain primitive, I, th I think it could be a good... Um, it's like a grid primitive. Blender has grids and planes. I mean, the plane and the grid are very overlapping in Blender, right? Add mesh plane, add mesh grid. A grid is a plane without uh, subdivisions, right? Um, so, so yeah, I think there should be a plane and with the option to subdivide, so then it becomes a grid, maybe. Um, but this feature is totally, totally a app for graphs for a new developer just look at how the cube one is done and and just make it and it's a plane it's a plane so um it's a great great exercise for the community to to tackle hmm. what i mean is a good exercise is because there is an example how it should work we there is no discussion about the naming like everybody it's, it's a plane um it just needs an icon yeah, that's something that needs to be done. An icon and the um, the actual yeah, tool. And what are the options? But the options are already available in when you add a um, when you add a plane. So it's like when you add a plane, this more or less should be the options. But maybe with subdivisions, so we can also include from the beginning. Yeah, but then that, that's another thing, right? So when you add a cube, right? That's a cube. Uh, the plane, the plane is gonna have like this, you know, like has one dimension and then what? The second dimension, what is it going to be? Or maybe this dimension for the plane could be subdivision. So when you move it to one side and the other, it can subdivide. Maybe with snapping or something like that, so it doesn't doesn't kill your computer halfway. Maybe it's a good idea um, to have the second transform to be subdivision. It's a great, it's a plane. No, it's a Susan. Oh, so it's a plane, and on the second uh, transform, it becomes, it morphs into Susan. Susanna. Why not? Three Delusions says, Hello, what do you think about uh, of this idea? Ability to add separators to the group node by disabling sockets. Ooh, no, wait. What is with this face? <laughs> separators to the group node by disabling sockets um well i like the idea of separators like like maybe um, a great like a, a line or a, just a just a just space between the sockets um i like the idea to group sections but yeah no not this way no not with the i i know you may be trying to get rid of them <laughs> Separate them for the love of... <laughs> yes, uh, I like separators, no socket value. Yeah, no, 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 this should be this, this should be an option for separator. Ah, you mean as, an, as in the group input, so from here you can add a socket type separator. Ah, no, no, it should be a... Uh, 
should be a toggle I guess like a layout maybe option um, but yeah we don't have the concept of separators in the nodes we only have them in the UI um, like in the UI layout but I like the idea um, maybe we at some point we're gonna have um, sub panels in nodes right and maybe we could tackle that issue with uh, like a part of a layout options for a node maybe um next lucas francisco hello pablo i would like to know if it will be possible using geometry nodes to scatter objects on a volume or in the place inside of a mesh and let me tell you it's being worked on there are there is um scatter on a volume and uh, let me see if it's in the backlog because i've seen someone working on it in the um you can enter the yeah not the geometry nodes we should change this to the other one too um if you go to blender chat uh you're gonna see the everything nodes um let's see volume volume distribute points in volume there you go is this the one um distribute points in a volume then for example cloud of monkeys inside of a cube which does not just its surface um there are many use cases for distributing in a volume yeah i think this is this is what you have in mind let me uh know but yes absolutely actually that's one of the the, the things that i use the most in the previous uh in the, in the previous in the current system of particle system that we have um in blender that is still there it's this the source in instead being a vertices to be volume yeah next in line is atomic samurai hey pablo glad you like my nickname <laughs> i was about to say it again why don't you do the short videos with music presenting the new features in Blender anymore? It was awesome. Yes, I agree, they were awesome, but it was just... And maybe here you can help. Well, you, uh, Samurai, and other... Um, it's... It was awesome. Oh, hey, somebody tried to create his own Blender Defender. Wow. Look at that! Pum, 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 pum. Boom! Nice with the drop, like a Transformers trailer. That's awesome. That is super, super nice. Thank you, Blender Defender, for creating it. Um, yeah, no. So why? Well, I think you can you can see a little bit here. The um the like some of the features have nice videos, but not all of them. Like this, it's okay video, but like I mean, I think geometry nodes um, would have been a great candidate for having um, more, you know, demos of the dynamic mo motion of the like changing vertex groups and moving particles with different um, groups and stuff, different um, instances. That one, I mean pretty sweet to do but it's also a lot of work and there wasn't a lot of time so yeah that was the reason hopefully for 2.93 or we just skip everything and we just make it for blender 3 the thing is long story short it uh, we want to make them uh, we want to you keep making them but um yeah they, they take time the previous ones were done by um francesco city and he was just super busy this time and the previous time the previous time was, I think, around when the cloud, the new cloud was launched. 
and uh, yeah, and now I'm busy with the with the. But if the community makes something like this, I would make some changes to this one, just to be to be honest. Uh, the music, I not a big fan of the the <laughs> chorus. <laughs> Um, it's a bit ep it's epic, but it's a bit too epic for my taste. But I mean, with doing something like this, but with more iterations and better um, content provided by the community, could work. Um, me again, don't hate me, please. No, you have one vote, so I'm gonna read. The creator of eCycles proved that it's possible to increase the performance of cycles, viewports, and rendering. These improvements can come to cycles eventually. Well, if he contributes uh, um, the code and the code is good quality, I think so. Um, I don't know the status of e of e cycles. Last time I like when it was launched, he said that after a year it would provide the code. Um, but I don't know what's the status of that uh, of that stuff. Next. Any plans to have any uh, Chromebook support with beautiful and odd one? But hey, I just really want to do some really cool art on my current hardware. Um, Chromebook, Chrome is is Linux, right? So could be um, could be. Um, no idea here. Um, sorry, but yeah, if uh, somebody else has uh, experience maybe it could be done it's gonna be very limited though it's like when people ask for blender on ipad yeah it's uh the ipad has like what six gigs of ram only so it's yeah tricky i i go all the way down so we can answer the questions that are being um they're as being asked now uh more uh, at the beginning sorry i was uh banning some people from the chat <laughs> Hello, Blender Defender. Congrats on the successful release. Congrats to you. Blender community site somehow messed up the thumbnail of this thread. Sorry about that. I missed the um, one minute trailer. So I made my own. Ah, yeah, this is what the one we saw. Um, so it would be nice if you could review it and you can find it here. Yes. Well, if you want to have... Ah, you already watched it. Glad you liked it. The music was very hard to do because everything is no budget. Uh, yeah, well, we do it also kind of on our spare time those videos because there, there's always so many things to do but yeah let's uh, continue oh yeah actually I am um, the I'm getting here in the chat the bone master branch of blender um, so um, the e cycles the the e cycles is made by a developer but also made by adding patches from the that are already around and uh, proposed to in, to be included in Blender, they may have some issues if for certain hardware. But uh, overall, these patches, most of these patches are public, so uh, the Bone Master branch should give you similar um, amount of speed than eCycles, but it's um, it's free and open source, and it's maintained by uh, Juan Hea. Uh, who's been in the show and uh, is one of the um, more visible contributors in the Spanish community as well. So you should check it out. Check out the uh, search for Bone Master in uh, on Blender on Graphical, and uh, you should get give it. Uh, you know what to. So if if somebody has the other cycles and this one and cycles, maybe you could do a benchmark. Maybe this is, this is something for like uh, uh, CG Geek could do, or would be nice to have a benchmark of all of them. Yeah, save search that. <laughs> now, yeah, Bone Master, only, only uh, search it inside of blender.community. Don't look at it on Google <laughs> or Bing. <laughs> the next question uh, by Hologram. Uh, let's uh, continue. Hologram, I was reading the comment, sorry. Are there plans to enable navigation to pass through during active commands? 
plans to enable na navigation to pass through during active commands. Manipulating the view with a mouse or space mouse during commands will be great. You mean during like model operators? Second, do you think uh, there will be any polishment of the mesh modeling tools anytime soon? Things that come to mind is improvements of loop cut with models to perform set flow as well as additional fail uh, face constraint slide tool. And third, okay, three questions. Um, so the first one, just to answer, um, plans to enable navigation to pass through during active commands. I don't know exactly, I think you mean the uh, model tools and that is a per tool change that needs to be done. Um, so you can navigate while performing like the I don't know, edge creases or just changing the edge stuff or um, circle select with the shortcut. It also blocks your view. Um, the problem in those are that when you're navigating, you're using some shortcuts that might be used by that one tool as well, like Alt, Shift, Control. So yeah, it's, um, it's a tricky one and it has to be done per tool. Any polishing on the mesh modeling tools? Um, not as far as I know. Besides the parametric modeling, which might come not too long from now, ish. Especially if the community jumps on board and starts adding those nodes, like primitive nodes, like a sphere node, uh, which is already working on uh, hands. They like extrude, loop, Loop cuts. Third, for modifiers, uh, are there any plans to add new ones, such as edit poly modifier, transform poly modifier, selection and volume selection modifier, to pass along selections in the stack modifier for procedural modeling. I also think the loop cut is in dire need of inserting loops at the cursor position rather than at the center with a press and drag manipulate. Um, yeah, those are options of the of the loop cut tool, I think. The um, edit poly modifier, that should... That should be either when when the parametric modeling gets added, but uh, not anytime soon. And the transform poly modifier, that should be a node as part of the, of the geometry nodes project. Next. Another question by Augusto. <laughs> Light groups. What happened to this feature? Um, it's you can see the chat in the in the chat or the discussion in the uh, in the thread in developer.blender.org. It's it's just stale there. Um, there hasn't been any new updates, unfortunately. There might be news regarding cycles in general, um, but uh, I, today I shared one actually about the, the viewport denoising. Next, Alexander Marik. Hello, Pablo. Like always, the job is uh, appreciate. I want to react to what you said last week at approximately 51 minutes. You say that hands work on primitive circle. Yes, since we can do with Blender a default cube, move all the face points to zero and the good axis and use a displace modifier to do a parametric cube. We can also um, a parametric circle if we add the bevel modifier. <laughs> In fact, we can do every base geometry with modifiers. Just create a custom property where you add the name of the base shape you want, two other properties with driver that define if x equals y equals set and x equals y not set in function of the base shape. Three others to, um, to tell x, y and c dimension. All right, so there is a tutorial <laughs> by Alexander here on how to make every primitive from scratch with modifiers that it's a uh, kind of crazy I never thought about it this way but yeah saving this comment for later the next question sorry I didn't get to read everything I just want to uh, be able to reply more um, as possible as much as possible Soren ask hi Pablo at first love the show thank you I look forward to it every week I am a little bit confused of geometry nodes and its design. Okay, let me get slightly brighter for this. It's getting darker. We are in this awkward time of the year where when I start the show is like blown away, they blown out the because of light and then at the end it's just dark. 
I'm a little bit confused of um, with geometry nodes and its design. In the shading node, you go from left to right. Output on the left, input on the right. No. No, no, it's actually the other way around. But with geometry nodes, for example, enter the output attributes on the left. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, there is no output attributes because the attributes go in the geometry. They are part of the geometry that you output. So, um, yeah, so it doesn't make sense to have them as outputs. Also, I would like to expect um, the output of an attribute uh, changes to be node socket. I can share the nodes, but in, ge in geometry nodes, you just enter the name of the attribute and plug the geometry into the sockets. You understand my confusion? I think I understand, but um, it's 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 hard to grasp it at the beginning. But what you like all the all the um, I just lost a piece of uh, <laughs> furniture, <laughs> a piece of the wall just fell. Like one of those red thingy that I have there, uh, there uh, just fell down <laughs> from my wall. I think I understand your confusion. I also had it at the beginning. I was like. But why can I output the attribute? And it was, yeah, well, you would need, there's no need to because the attributes come with the geometry. So either you have an output for every attribute available or you just, um, you just tweak the ones you need and then you pull them out of that geometry. I mean, there is no attributes without geometry. They need a geometry. So that's why it's a bit confusing, I know, but it's the one thing that you need to grasp to get the entire system. It's just the one thing. Um, so my question is, will this design be changed to the same design as in nodes? Or has it very own concept? It's its own uh, concept, but... Um, geometry shading animation. Um, well, animation nodes is completely different, right? And animation nodes even has like loops and all this weird stuff that groups of nodes affect other areas. Um, but yeah, no, it won't change. Uh, let's do five, four, five, five questions, but super fast because it's already two minutes past six o'clock in the Netherlands. Hi, Pablo. Give some love to the UV editor. Nothing since 2.75. You are wrong. What do you mean? There is no nothing since 2.75. Please allow me to... Uh, to let 2.91 so is it i think it was 2.91 that have some uv stuff u uv yeah uv editor control smoothness of the uvs of um improve performance improve performance the performance of the uv editor has been crazy um improved the okay well performance i know a lot of people don't care about performance but it's super important um, here, better material UV split, then uh, there was more in the better UV, look, look at this, look at this, modifying the mesh doesn't transform the UVs, tell me if this is not a UV improvement, I know they're more needed, but this to me was mind blowing, for me this was like, wow, it's super super, uh, it's, it was needed. It's like, wow, why didn't we have this before? But that's with everything. And again, pick the shortest past. These the selection tools got improved in 2.90, so like uh, three six months ago, not too long ago. Pick the shortest path for the field region and UV ripping, so it matches the tools in the in the in the 3D view, so you can cut it with the V with with the V shortcut. So yeah, it's not fair that you say that it's nothing new since 2.75, which is like <laughs> three years ago, because there has been improvement. Come on, there is more, there is more, but there has been improvements. Um, hi, Paolo. We'll be able to see the app to to apply the geometry node, basically baking it into a mesh. It should be should be possible, but you will lose everything, I guess. Um, no, I don't know if all the changes can be applied. I have to ask the developers, but yeah. Um, I don't know if all the changes should be applied. Let's uh, continue. Reanimate. Hi, Pablo. Texture node. When? Joke aside, I am wondering 
is texture node gonna be ported into the geometry node system or is gonna use uh, gonna use as is but more proper the texture node for what do you mean like mm, like the entire texture node system um, like the texture editor but a one that is not a joke like this one um, this has to be completely rewritten from scratch it's really not in a great state um, I'm surprised that it's still around even <laughs> but yeah it apparently doesn't bother much developers for the code to be there but yeah the Texture node editor needs a lot of work, but if you mean the texture node inside of geometry nodes, it's already there in the sample texture um, for geometry nodes. But yeah, it needs a, a proper project on its own. It's gonna be its own thing. But I, I would say that goes together with like the new or better painting tools in Blender in general. The... How many were? There were... One, two... Three. Number four. Hola Pablo, how far is the geometry node intended to go? Will it only be used to act like animation nodes to replace particles or will it be used to create procedural city with procedural house with procedural people in procedural work? I think you can already do procedural city with procedural house with procedural people uh, on a very basic level but um, it's not intended to replace animation nodes. Um, animation nodes is its, it's its own planet. Something similar to animation nodes that some some of the similar capabilities could be achieved not with geometry nodes because remember geometry nodes is still one object that can instance others and that's about it. It's about the one object that has the, the, the node system. Uh, animation nodes will be better replaced with some kind of collection nodes so imagine if you and, and to a collection you could apply a modifier a collection nodes modifier and use that to work instead of with geometry with objects replace objects change them um, modify them animate them uh, just like play more with that side of of the node tree G collection nodes it's more of a replacement for animation nodes. A geometry nodes project is gonna continue, I think it has for a good while. The team itself, the current team that is working on it, has a sort of a plan already for the next six to eight weeks. Actually less, that was the plan a few weeks ago, so maybe six weeks or so more. Um, the beginning of the current sprint was about the attribute uh, workflow that got a lot of improvements. We've seen it in the previous weeks. It just just keeps getting better. And uh, now we get per proper error reporting, but um, the next in line is about previewing the attributes in the viewport, just to make it more easy to see what you're working on. That it's crucial for the attributes project to, to continue. Then uh, would be, I think maybe more towards maybe parametric modeling or so and then the team can move on to other stuff like other like collection nodes for example but the community like Victor, Fabian, um, Miro, all the, the people that are already contributing nodes to geometry nodes they can just continue going and then they can keep the project adding more nodes um, that makes sense of course it's just not adding nodes for the sake of it but you know, making it more complete. I think the team that created Geometry Nodes uh, without the community, just, just the, the core team, it's, it would be better if uh, after Geometry Nodes is a bit more mature, the, they, they move to another project and then build the foundations there while the community keeps adding the missing nodes for the Geometry Nodes project. And once those foundations foundations are in, then the community can help this project and then the team can move into something else. Like, yeah, we said it, like texture nodes or shading nodes or physics nodes, simulation. Why not? So yeah, bright future. Um, that is all. I think I managed to answer the whole question. Let's see the last one. Chance is already here. I have, pa hi Pablo, shift H hides unselected and alt h brings everything back the problem is why everything gets selected when using alt h 
this is not a problem when you have 10 or more but when you have 10 or a thousand uh, it's a problem I know you can use slash to isolate selected but I did not get the point why it selects all when using alt H um, let's see why why would you like if it doesn't if it wouldn't yeah it shouldn't change your selection right if you do alt H to to show everything mm, yeah I think it's it's useful maybe it should be an option in the operator because if you bring them back and you already have them selected it's easy to send them to a, like to make a new collection out of that um, but uh, yeah it messes up your collection right let me know what it's how how do you how do you think it should work should it should like just to make it more clean should alt h select the objects that have been shown or not or should be an option in the operator that shows there like in the in the corner in the bottom left corner let me know and with that high note and the fading of the music in the background i'm gonna be switching gears i have to stop this show and start the live show i do in spanish it's the same as blender today but it's called blender hoy and i'd say i i do it in spanish because that's my I don't know if you know this, but uh, I know it's really hard with my very great native accent. Um, but I, I am from Argentina. I speak Espanol. And I do Blender today and Espanol. Because Blender community is diverse, you know. It's, uh, it's good to spread the word in other... Uh, especially in your mother language. Especially especially that. So I here's a shout out to all the people making tutorials all the the, the all, all the non-native english speakers that are struggling to make tutorials in english because there is a larger audience in english try making them in your own language as well even if it's a language that only one country speaks like i don't know well i don't know italian the dutch um it's i know it's just the one country that speaks the language but the love you get by the people like the appreciation by the people that maybe they understand english but it's so much better in your own native language it's like it's like a world of difference you you make a connect a different connection when you speak in your own native language you make different jokes you make everything you are uh, you're even more fun in your own native language or less fun depending on <laughs> depending on how you uh, deal with it all right, totally unrelated uh, <laughs> comment at the end. But hey, it wouldn't be Blender today without it. So in five, four, three, two, one. I hope you had a good show today. I know I did. Even though we didn't get a lot of features, I was fun to, to see and to discuss a bit more about the current features. Sorry to everybody that I didn't manage to answer the questions but we're gonna do it again next week same place same time with another episode of blender today and ciao